We welcome you all to Talk the Talk. My name is Janine Steen. And I'm Tony Ann Antoniato. A Masters of Myofunctional Therapy. Interview physicians and dentists on the island so you can learn how their services can benefit your child's speech and language development and complement the therapy that they are receiving. Hi, today we are here with Dr. Michael Campo, owner and operator of South Shore Chiropractic with locations in Farmingville and Shirley. Welcome to our Talk to Talk today. We're so glad to have you uh, speaking with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute honor and, and pleasure to be here today. I appreciate the invite. Oh, we love it. Thank you. Um, the more information we can get to the listeners and the observers is always beneficial. Education is always key. Um, so you are going to be a benefit to so many when we appreciate that. Um, so I'm going to speak to you a little bit about some of the questions we often hear, some of the questions that we often have um, regarding referring to chiropractic and how that can support some of our patients, um, specifically with the pediatric population. So how would you say a chiropractor can support that pediatric population? Well, you know, it's um, chiropractors fit into the puzzle piece in regards to the collaborative workup of patients. Um, you know, being in, uh, a practitioner for 24 years, my youngest patient was two weeks old and my oldest patient was 98 years old. So okay. you know, when everybody is treated individually, um, when you're dealing with the pediatric population, they are their own special breed. Um, the wonderful thing about kids is they do respond quickly to care. Uh, they heal a lot faster than, uh, myself and, 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 and as well as you guys, and us, yeah. mm -hmm. um, um, uh, it, but I get a lot of referrals, uh, from, uh, pediatricians as well as, um, oral surgeons, um, uh, in, in regards to dealing with pediatric issues. Okay. Great. Um, I know that we have a lot of children that we see that will have, um, ear infections and allergies, asthma. How is a chiropractor? Can you support these children? A chiropractor, we, we are neuromusculoskeletal specialists dealing with uh, disorders associated with the spine and peripheral extremities. Uh, we deal with uh, the obvious in regards to neck pain, back pain, pinched nerves, um, disc injuries, sciaticas, but we also deal with more systemic type issues as well. Um, in regards to children, we've dealt with um, uh, continual congestion of fluid in the ears, um, we've dealt with attention deficit disorders. Um, we've uh, dealt with asthma. Um, understanding that the nervous system, the nerves control every cell tissue and organ in your body. Um, so uh, coming to the cause or the understanding of why somebody is suffering something is also helping the treatment of. So when a child, for example, for ear infections, that's a common one for kids. It's almost in vogue that it's almost a reflex now for, for putting tubes in their ears to allow for this drainage. Um, when you're a child, and, and especially an infant, your station tube is very straight. And as we develop our, uh, and get older, uh, our, our station tubes become more tortuous, allowing for drainage. Um, so if it's very straight, you know, think about a 98 point uh, the bath and all the and then what happens is you have the congestion that eventually leads to infections uh they're thrown on antibiotics and they go through a realm and um and parents come to me sometimes because of the spectrum of doing nothing to the spectrum of doing surgery they want to avoid that um in your realm you know being underwater it, it affects uh both pronunciation um learning uh, these are all the things that we want to avoid for children as a chiropractor, um, the different the different uh, reasons that can that can occur um, is either you can have allergies and the allergies with histamine, you can have congestion. Sometimes the teething uh, creates congestion back uh, into their ears. And on cervical adjustments, they help um, in allowing the fluid to drain. Um, and that's you know in regards to you know you know ear infections. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are other kind of causes and, you know, the whole idea is to uh, avoid surgery. Sometimes that's inevitable. 
Uh, but many, many times, um, uh, if you can support that drainage as they continue to develop, and if it could be avoided, that would that's terrific. Mm -hmm. Are, is a chiropractor acting proactively or reactively when you have a patient that is either suffering from ear infections or chronic fluid? Um, is it normally that diagnosis is made, say, by a pediatrician and then they see the chiropractor? Or being that everyone's eustachian tube is straight at that time, you should be doing it proactively in order to limit the chances for fluid, de fluid developing. Well, you know, patients come into my office with, with ear congestion, usually at the end of the rainbow. They've exhausted other avenues. They've had chronic, chronic ear infections. They've been on multiple antibiotics, and they just continue to be reoccurring, and they're very fearful of, of, of uh, putting tubes in the ears. Not every kid gets these ear infections. It's not every kid. It's some kids. Yes. Um, and, you know, uh, again, some kids also may have underlying allergies and overhistamine production, which may lead to that congestion. Um, you know, it, it's, it's whatever is in that patient's best interest in order to allow them to be free of that fluid accumulation and to improve learning and hearing. Um, um, so from a, from a proactive, or I like to say that, you know, that I don't think everybody needs to come in to avoid ear infections. Okay. I think you need to come in if you're suffering in, uh, uh, ear infections or ear congestion. Okay. Um, you know, so um, uh, my goal is to allow the body to eventually either catch up or the drainage to occur that you don't need to come into the office. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And how many adjustments does that take or how many appointments would that take in order to cease any type of relief? Is that is there a series of appointments? Is it patient by patient, visit by visit? Everybody is different in, in that aspect. And, and uh, some kids may have uh, worse congestion than other kids. Um, your intention, it, you have intention to where you hope the patient will respond. Um, uh, if it's one visit, wonderful. If it's six visits, wonderful. If it's, if it's, Hey, it helped. And then I'm um, back in two months. I'm back again. It's again. And, and that adjustment helps again. So, so, you know, so be it. So it's very patient to patient and how that works. It's not a set formula. Like you need three times a week, then two times a week, then one time a week. That's not the way I, I run my patient. It's how the patient responds to care and then the continued therapy followed, follow then after. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Do you want to do the TMJ um, since I've been so, chatty? <laughs> um, how, as a chiropractor, you mentioned that you have patients that suffer from uh, temporal mandibular joint disorder. So how are you supporting that? What does that look like? Well, a, a TMJ um, is a very common complaint, um, uh, both for kids and, and adults. Mm -hmm. You have to come to the conclusion of why somebody has TMJ. The number one cause of TMJ dysfunction is muscular imbalance. Um, you have four, you know, um, four muscles in, involved in mastication and joint motion. You have your masseter, which is a big, powerful, you have a, you have a medial and lateral pterygoid and you have your temporalis. Um, and they should be in all in perfect synergy in allowing for perfect, for, for perfect alignment and equal joint opening. Um, so many times this can happen traumatically. I like to call that active injuries. Somebody takes a blow to the jaw. There's maybe a whiplash injury where there's an extreme drawing of the arm, uh, of the mouth opening, uh, creating a dysfunction, an imbalance in the musculature where you start to get asymmetry in jaw motion um, versus passive injuries, which somebody that don't realize that they're creating change. If, if somebody sleeps on their jaw every night, eventually the body says, hey, this is the new pattern of the muscles. Muscles here become lengthened. Muscles here become shortened. Next thing you know, progressively, I, I didn't do anything. I don't know why my jaw is bothering me. I don't know why it's opening asymmetrically. I don't know why it's starting to pop. And they don't realize that these little things they do, whether they're on their, on their desks like this. Um, they, so that I call those passive injuries. The other, and those, and both the active and passive injuries respond very well to care. Okay. Um, the other that's more that's more difficult to treat is somebody who has true anatomical tr problems, underbites, overbites, um, some type of anatomical dysfunction that puts more stress on 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 those muscles, and and that and that's more difficult to treat. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as you know, it's, it's it can be treated, but it's also you're not solving that that anatomical change. You're more supporting and, and trying to help them from a palliative perspective. Mm -hmm. 
um, with TMJ injuries, is chiropractic able to support those patients in, in and of itself? Or does there need to be a physical therapist or a massage therapist or someone else that's supporting, whether it be that muscle tension or muscle development in terms of building or um, supporting those structures or that structure? Look, I, I, not every chiropractor deals with TMJ. Uh, you, you have to know what you're doing. Not every physical therapist deals with TMJ. Um, massage therapy, I don't know if, if they know too much specifically about TMJ. No disrespect. No, um, yeah. As a chiropractor, um, you know, we're in the realm of, of dealing with all musculoskeletal and neurological. Um, you, you, physical therapy uh, is probably encompassed within that. Okay. Um, you know, we, we, you know, we're doctors of chiropractic, and, and 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 this isn't a chiropractic versus physical therapy thing. But you know, as far as you know, uh, chiropractic, what we do is we find the, the the lesion I like to call in the muscle where, and we take that muscle, and I use a technique called ART, active release technique, where you put the muscle in a shortened state and you lengthen the muscle through through passive motion and through active motion, where the patient is really uh, opening the jaw and you're literally grounding out that muscle and letting it heal grounding out that muscle letting it heal and you're trying to create that balance um and um uh, it's a these are very tender muscles associated with the face yeah not to scare patients but the first one or two treatments it's it's like oh like you know very very uncomfortable and as you get used to care and as the body starts to heal yeah the, the, the therapies come way way more way more comfortable. Um, my uh, other modalities involved with that are also ultrasound. Ultrasound can be used on a continuous wave to bring heat into that area to make that muscle more supple. Um, so, um, you know, uh, dealing with the chiropractor who knows what they're doing, you know, it, it can be very effective in resolving, not to mention bringing awareness. If you are that person who has those passive injuries, you know, stop sleeping like this. Stop putting these positions. You don't realize you're doing these things, creating these imbalances. hundred percent, hundred percent. I know my sister-in-law came to you for TMJ and she swears by the treatment. She had tried anything and everything that worked, but it was ultimately um, her time with you that made the difference. Do you find your treatment approach for TMJ varies between the pediatric population and the adult population? Well, you do. I mean, you have to, you have to understand, you know, you know, children, uh, pain threshold could be a little bit lower. You, you, you have to kind of slow, slowly get into this, the, 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 but the treatment necessarily doesn't change. They have the same muscles we have. Okay. Um, and, and the wonderful thing about, uh, children in pediatrics is they respond so quickly. Um, those patterns are easier to be corrected in their short duration of life versus something you've been doing for 25 years, um, where it's more a chronic pattern. Uh, these chronic patterns also with TMJ can start leading to wearing out of the, we have these little discs that live in our little, uh, in our TMJ and they can start getting worn out. And when we start getting wear, worn out, now you're dealing with now breakdown of a joint. It becomes again, a little bit more on the, on the chronic end. Uh, kids, you nip it quick. You figure out the reason why, if it's, if it's, you know, um, hopefully it's not anatomical, um, and you can resolve it. If it is anatomical, you, you can give some of that. Uh, supportive palliative relief um, as they try to tackle other ways uh, to try to uh, correct that structural deficit. Got it. And I feel for the pediatric population, especially that mouth guards aren't being provided and, and different oral appliances, especially because of that primary dentition, having the option of chiropractic care to support their TMJ um, or their symptoms associated with temporomandibular joint disorder is always a benefit, um, especially to our patients. Mm -hmm. Um, how about in terms of language development? Is there some way? You know, with, the, with those night guards. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> no, you go. Go ahead. Tell saying, me about those night guards. Saying, you know, you, you think about the other approaches in dealing with TMJ. Yeah. You go to a dentist. Here's a night guard. The night guard doesn't necessarily resolve a lesion, a shortening, a lengthening of a muscle. What it does is typically people with TMJ tend to grind their teeth. You know, because uh, they're in this, they're in this state. And so the night guards don't, don't necessarily create a tracking or an improvement of the lesion. Okay. Now, can it protect your teeth? Absolutely. But, but in, in my, in my book, it doesn't necessarily solve the issue of what, what's causing the TMJ dysfunction. Again, the number one cause of TMJ dysfunction is muscular imbalance. A night guard isn't going to change that. Yes. Um, now there are more invasive ways. Some some dentists actually in, inject uh, into the into those muscles. Um, 
uh, again, a little more invasive. Um, 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 you know, now certain patients that is necessary. You may have to go more invasive, but when we're in the spectrum of, again, of nothing to the most invasive, you want to try to exhaust everything possible to try to get to that, to the, to that resolution. Absolutely. And, you know, myofunctional therapy is the same, um, focus is dealing with that mus muscle imbalance. Um, so it's amazing how much we cross over into each other's fields in terms of how TMJ impacts not only the myofunctional therapist, but also um, the treatment via chiropractor. Absolutely. Um, so back to, in terms of language development, do you see any importance or anything as a chiropractor that can support overall growth and development when mm -hmm. it comes to language development? Well, you, you know, language, I mean, I, I, obviously you're more focused on that. I mean, my stuff may secondar secondarily be affected with with learning. So we talked about the, the ears with the fluid. Well, if you're on the water, you're not listening, your pronunciation's off and your hearing is reduced. Um, coupled with, um, you know, say attention deficit disorders, you know, um, you know, so, you know, when somebody can't focus and can't learn, um, you know, uh, again, that may be involved with, with, with learning and or hearing and or pronunciation, um, you know, from a chiropractic perspective, you know, the way that we can help with attention deficit disorders is, you know, your nerves control every cell tissue and organ in the body. Um, and, uh, with, with adjustments, especially to the thoracolumbar region, um, you create a balance in the autonomics. Your autonomic nervous system has two parts and it's in a perfect harmonious seesaw you have your sympathetic which uh, if you remember from school that was the fight or flight <laughs> yeah you're, we're, you're bringing all this back to us now you know right yeah uh -huh. <laughs> you, <get laughs> like grad school again. you know you get into that almost car accident or you almost fight you know that that adrenaline rush all it's the fight or flight all your blood shunts to your area to protect yourself to flee or protect yourself it, and it suppresses the parasympathetic which is controls all your visceral organs so you know when somebody is in a heightened state of, of, of uh, if you have issues in your spine it raises the sympathetic output it suppresses parasympathetic not to mention it can also affects mass cell production causes an increase in histamine so kids with asthma kids uh you know, back to the allergies with, with congestion of the ears. Um, but that adjustment to that area balances your nervous system and you're in a less of a sympathetic tonia. You're reducing that sympathetic output and kids can, can focus a little bit, can focus a little bit better. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, I, many patients come to me again at the end of the rainbow because their kids are prescribed medicines and, and the kids are, you know, it's interfering with learning. Now there's a nine to one ratio, boys to girls with attention deficit disorder. Uh, well, the testosterone is, is a portion of that. Um, you know, when, when my kids used to have play dates, my daughter, they would share the crayons and my son, he'd break the crayons and throw them. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. So there's, a, there's a little, a little, a little difference there. So, you know, um, um, but, you know, chiropractic care, again, can help in, in balancing of the nervous system and, and allow these kids to be better in tune with their environment and helping them with their learning processes. Um, in regards to development and language, this is all involved with that. If we can get them to be able to focus a little bit better, if we get them to hear a little bit better, um, uh, th then, then their learning is improved. And in terms with ADHD, in particular, attention deficit disorder, um, what does a course of treatment look like? Obviously, that's something that's, you know, part of their uh, neuro neuro neurology or whatever, you, however you would say it's part of who they are. How does the treatment for that work? Is it something long term or is it something that's short term with long term effects or is it something they have indefinitely but maintained long term with regards to chiropractic care? Everybody is different. Um, and um, I like to go through a course of care and I like to see how they respond. Uh, my whole idea is, is if you're having upswings to come in, if the adjustments are effective and they're, and they're, and they're holding and a person is, is their, their, their nervous system is, is better flowing. They're better intact with their environment and they're improved. If there's a, if there are maybe maybe an upswing where there's where there's more of an imbalance of, of the nervous system, the adjustments are helpful in, in restoring that. Um, you know, we, we, we find maybe when they're a little bit younger and then they intend the kids tend to outgrow these things or 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 they're 
you know, uh, better in, involved to understand them from themselves to be able to focus, to have more control. Um, but it's person to person. It really is. You know, um, I don't like, personally, I don't want you in my office three times a week for the rest of your life. I want you to get the care that you need uh, to ho hopefully be able to, um, and, and, and you know, for those kids to be able to learn better and uh, be more content. It's not cookie cutter. It's patient specific. Based it's, on it's so individual. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, how about sleep apnea, sleep, sleep services in children? Can a chiropractor help with these um, types of patients and children? Well, you know, sleep apnea it, it isn't um, so much associated with me. When you talk about sleep apnea with children mm -hmm. versus adults, adults that sleep apnea that tends to come later on in life. There are certain typical body type tends to be you know, more of an obese, sedentary type of person. Um, uh, and they develop that sleep apnea, which uh, can cause long term effects. It's more stress on the heart. The, sleep apnea is the equivalency when you're sleeping, you're holding your breath, you're not breathing. It's like doing a 50 yard dash throughout the whole night. You really don't get into deep sleep. Your cortisol levels increase, your stress hormones increase, puts more stress on your heart over time. They can lead to high blood pressure. Uh, you're gaining weight, can lead to diabetes. It, it's a whole callous events. Getting the proper diagnosis of sleep apnea can truly save lives and, and, and health ailments. So starting on a, on a youth end, it's typically when you see that sleep apnea from children, it's usually because these, these kids, their adenoids and tonsils are, are at the age of, you know, I believe the age of four is the size of an adult of which the rest of their body is not. And so that catch up, you know, it, you know, creates that problem where, you know, you know, to le the leading to sometimes, you know, eliminating and taking out the tonsils and adenoids, um, which, uh, you know, um, is invasive. Those are lymphoid tissues, yeah. you know, they, do, they produce white blood cells. So if you can be avoided, wonderful. Um, but, you know, with children, it, it's, it, it's interesting Be it's like a catch up, you know, and, but if it becomes so invasive that it's leading to these other health, health effects, and if they're not sleeping, now we're going back to learning. Uh, now we're going back into ADHD. Now we're going back into this whole other realm. So proper diagnosis. Um, now, do I treat that so much? Not so much, um, but I'm uh, acutely aware of it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And does there anything that you are doing that can help to open the airway more that maybe could support an individual that has these enlarged tonsils and adenoids and a parent is yet hesitant about going under surgery to whether have them removed or shaved or what have you? Uh, tonsils and adenoids in regards to airway, no. In regards to respiratory improvement, um, asthma is something that, that we that we help. Okay. Um, you know, as a chiropractor, I like to say I collaboratively help in ailments and treatment. Mm -hmm. um, I do not put my eggs in my basket to say, hey, you got asthma, just come here, don't do anything else. Right. You know, you, you, you have to be managed. This is what's wonderful in healthcare, as we all have a little piece of the puzzle to help and what's in that patient's best interest. Mm -hmm. You know, adjustments, uh, I, I kind of briefly skimmed over in regards to the thoracic spine in regards to asthma, you know, it, you know where there's an increased sympathetic tonia, as we talked about that seesaw, you can have an increase, because of the increased sympathetic tonia, you have a release of uh, mast cells pr that produce histamine. And that increased histamine will can lead to um, asthma. Um, and, um, and so, you know, many kids grow out of asthma. Well, you know, why does that happen? You know, so like, you know, so the adjustments to the spine do help in um, reducing the asthma and helping them being more in contact uh, with their, as their nervous system can flow and hopefully avoid, uh, grow out of asthma. But in regards to opening up the airway from a chiropractic perspective, anatomically, you, we can't change the size of those tonsils. Right. You know, we hope they grow, that maybe that it is proportionally more, systemat, more symmetrical, um, but, you know, not any, any, any physical change to the, to the size of the adenoids or tonsils or, or, or airway. Mm -hmm. We try with adults. We try with adults to get them back into a more healthier lifestyle. That maybe again on the on the adult spectrum, you know, let's let's engage in more healthier lifestyles. Let's try some some weightless situations, uh, more better diet. Uh, in chiropractic, we we're we're phys, you know we're we're doctors that discuss that kind of stuff with our patients. Just you know, so we it's it's yes, the wellness on care and feeling better and dealing with ailments, but it's also the lifestyle changes that promote wellness. Mm -hmm. And I feel like your facilities are very interdisciplinary in nature, 
um, which is an absolute benefit to your patients. And that's absolutely a benefit to us as speech language pathologists. Again, we can't work in a vacuum. We can't work by ourselves. Um, we definitely need these other professionals to be working as that interdisciplinary team to get those long-term results. Um, and that's one of the things that's been so wonderful about you, you and your facility. Um, Thank you so much for being with us today. I think you've provided a wealth of knowledge, not just for our patients, to us, but hopefully we're able to take this information and educate many more people um, and open their eyes to how much more chiropractic care can do, um, especially when they are maybe averse to long-term medication or um, a more significant or invasive approach such as surgery. Um, I think that is what we've accomplished today. And uh, I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, and, uh, you know, as we're all involved in um, uh, the wellness and, and helping our, uh, the children, um, uh, it's, it's just an absolute pleasure to be here today. Um, uh, and I appreciate the invite. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a great day, Dr. Campo, and uh, we'll speak soon. Thank you, Dr. Take Campo. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Bye.